I remember when we drove in for the first time with our daughter and got to the hotel at night. It was a long drive. There's no city lights or anything. You can only see as far as the headlights of the car will allow. And when we woke up and I looked out the window, I thought, my God, is that real? It's where the landscape looks like it's fighting for its own survival where you're reminded, just looking around you, the improbability of human life, of any life on this planet. It's very distinctly Western, which is how John Ford wound up there in the first place, looking for those iconic cinematic landscapes. show is very much about not just the West, but the West as channeled through directors like John Ford, Clint Eastwood, and Sergio Leone. All of those films were shot on film. So I grew up in a film household. My brother was shooting Super 8 when I was three years old. So as long as I can remember, film has been a part of my life. It was especially important for this project because of the other films we were trying to evoke. Paul Cameron, who is a masterful cinematographer, had worked with some of my favorite directors, kindly agreed to come on board and shoot on film with us. And I remember Harley's Ranch for the first time with Paul. This is an amazing ranch on the Colorado River in Castle Valley, where you have what looks like someone took the Alps and stapled them to Monument Valley. I mean, it's just everywhere you point that camera, just a place of stunning beauty. And again, it, everyone felt it. We'd flown our crew and the cast out from LA, and they all found themselves pinching themselves, saying, this can't possibly be real. People would be sitting there wanting to take still photos for their own records. Um, and it's it's somewhat counterproductive on that level when the entire crew yeah, is taking exactly. pictures of the vista. It's like, no, we got to shoot. It was a little bit of Westworld for them as well, mm -hmm. that sense of being transported. The lines between what is story that's written on the page and what is story that just evolves as part of the visual look that a team builds together, they were completely blurred. I remember the first time I laid eyes on Evan Rachel Wood in her Dolores costume. We talked about wanting it to evoke a fairy tale princess. Trish Somerville, absolutely wonderful, a genius costume designer feels like a very limiting description for what she does. We didn't want to make it pink or anything like that, but Trish said, well, what about baby blue? Which is traditionally a more masculine color, and this kind of, it had a sort of denim quality, and it just brings out Evan's eyes. Between that and this long, princessy hair, the first time I saw her, the transportation was so complete. The wardrobe there told a story the same way that Tandy's wardrobe tells this story. Her costume from the Mariposa very much flaunts all these womanly curves. She's meant to be looked at, she's meant to be objectified. Tandy often says that in the costume she felt more naked than the nude scenes because it's meant to evoke the idea of she's selling parts of herself. Creating Westworld, you're making a place where the guests wouldn't just come to see these hosts, these creations who were totally perfect in embodying, you know, the girl next door, the gunslinger, these preternaturally idealized forms. But they're also coming for the world itself, so it has to be similarly impressive and perfect and unique. If we did the green screen version of it, you would feel the artifice of it, and it has to be real. When you're 
in Sweetwater, you feel like you're in a play. Thanks to Nathan Crowley's incredible production design, everything is practical. You could walk into anywhere and you, you want to grab a drink at the saloon, you know, and every detail of it is so enticing that you want to be a guest at Westworld. Melody Range, which is the facility where we shoot, has an incredible history of all its own. The storied quality of it, the shows that have shot there over the years. The world of Westworld is really a pastiche of different ideas from the 1840s and 60s and 90s. And Nathan was very excited about ripping out the backside of the town and putting in a train station. It was a brilliant idea because it doubled the size of the town. We've seen that town shot in other movies and it never quite looks like this. We knew we wanted a shot along the lines of one of the shots in Once Upon a Time in the West that just take you out of the train station and into the town. We wanted that depth and complexity. And so Paul lined up the crane, the camera, the train, all the different pieces. And for a second, you really just felt like someone had flipped a switch. and. There you were in the Old West. These Old Western backlots were often laid out east to west. And one of these Paul really fought for was to take the scenes and break them apart so that you'd shoot one half of the scene in the morning with the good light on one actor's side and one half in the afternoon with the good light on the other actor's side, just to give everything that ethereal glow. That became enormously complicated when you're trying to shoot a big action sequence. The elaborate shootout sequence in which Ingrid, as armistice, blows away basically the entire town. We'd laid it out carefully for these things. You can build as much reality as you can in front of the camera, it shows. So here's this town that was big enough and weird enough that it started to feel like a real place. We'd line everything up in terms of the stunts, and then we shot that whole sequence really in one continuous go. You're really trying to build as much reality as possible, and the only way to do that is to have a phenomenally talented crew and a phenomenally talented and committed cast. We were lucky enough to work with such talented people. You would bring them a notion and they would embellish it and bring it to life and do things you couldn't dream of. Lisa and I had gone and <laughs> visited on, on one of the only vacations that I can remember taking in the last five she, years. He took me to a car manufacturing plant. I thought it was your idea. That was not my idea. We went to Germany to go see how cars are made. So we were looking at this factory in Germany where they make cars, and they have this machine, and it, it's so absurd, it almost feels whimsical. When they paint the car unibody, they take it and they dip it in a tank of paint and they pull it back out again, which makes a lot of sense, right? If you've got a big enough tank and some big, strong robots, it's a great way to paint something, right? And it somersaults into the thing and then somersaults back out. We just thought, let's make a human that way. <laughs> So we took the same process for this suspended Vitruvian man. We showed up, we walked onto the set. Everyone was very excited. We had this huge tank of Elmer's glue, I mean a swimming pool of Elmer's glue, basically, and this giant, incredibly powerful machine. That's all real. It's embellished a little bit with Physifex, but 90% of what you're looking at is real. first day that we worked on set with Anthony Hopkins, the scene with Jeffrey Wright. There's a bit of a hush as you walk on set. And, you know, we thought, no, we're really, we're really doing this thing. And here are our words, and he's really saying them and imbuing them with all of that Anthony Hopkins-ness. It was pretty, pretty special.
So much of it is a blur because we were just running and gunning the whole time. But I do remember at the wrap of the Amir episode, I turned to Jonah and I said, we need to like push pause for a moment so we have something to savor, just a moment of stillness between us because this project of ours was such a dream come true. It was the early morning, sweet water looked beautiful, you know, the sun was rising and everything had this kind of sepia hue. We had the whole town to ourselves and we went in a golf cart and we just coasted around the town for a while and we kind of just locked it in our minds what a magical experience it had been. You sort of dream, you know, what, what would happen if you took the best cast you could imagine and a crew where everyone is brilliant at what they do. What could you create there? And then you'd find yourself on this street where if you forgot yourself for a second or if you lost sight of the camera, you really could lose yourself.